Hi, I'm organized and I'm super organized. Which one are you? Keep watching. Hi, it's Donna Robertson and Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe. I am so excited. It's a new year and I've already made so many New Year's resolutions. Oh, me and too. I remember when I first started sewing, Mm -hmm. One of my top resolutions were, was going to be get my sewing room organized. organized. Yeah, because it is so easy to let it go. It and is. then you can't find anything <laughs> and it takes forever to do anything. And whenever it's nice and organized and you walk in the room, it's like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> yes. And I remember, uh, you know, Fran grew up under my sewing machine, of yes. course, because I was, I was like uh, obsessed with sewing. I guess I still am. <laughs> but I would... I would come home from the uh, mm -hmm. from the fabric stop shop, and I would walk in through my laundry room. I would take the fabric out and throw it in the washing machine and oh. wash and dry it, and then I'd spend hours getting the threads off of oh. it. Uh, I don't do that anymore. Uh, then I would I would fold it up, and I had a big wicker basket with a lid, oh, and I would yeah. put that fabric in there. Well, you know, it was about this deep. So when I wanted something, uh -huh. it was dig through there, dig through there. And one time, used, she used to have a little pillow, and it was a real silky pillow, and she was only like maybe an, a year and a half or so, and she carried that pillow everywhere, and it came up missing. Oh, my gosh. She was not a happy little camper because she wanted her pillow. Oh, I want my pillow. Oh. And it was about six months later I found it. It was down in the bottom of the wicker basket. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, so I was not the best at organizing my fabric, but Fran's sewing room is probably because she had trauma from losing her pillow. <laughs> Maybe. So, Fran, tell us what you think about folding fabric. Okay, so I love to make my sewing room pretty. Um, and one of the ways that I do that is to organize everything really well so that I can see it, see what I have, and, of course, find it whenever I need it or if I'm looking mm -hmm. for a specific color or something. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is folding the fabric and how you store it. So, of course, at Fabric Cafe, we have three-yard quilts, and we use a lot of one-yard cuts. So the way that I prefer to store one yard cuts for my three yard quilts, um, I'm going to just start here. I have a one yard cut here and you can see here's the selvages. So what I'm going to do is just fold it in half, the selvage to the fold. Then I'm going to fold it in half again, the other direction. And then one more time, the same direction. Mm -hmm. and then this way. Now, there's a reason why I like to fold it in this manner, because I store most of my one yard cuts either on a shelf or in a bin like I have here. Mm -hmm. And I like to fold it so there's only one big fold on the edge. If I have two folds on the edge, then in my head I'm thinking I have two yards. So I fold it so that you only see one fold. So I can actually see, oh, I've got a yard of this, a yard of this. A yard. Mm -hmm. So it works really, really well. Here's an example of where you have two yards. That's right. And you can see it real fast. That's great. great. Yeah, yes. so I could make a twin quilt with this, these particular fabrics, which works perfectly. So I'll know. So it's very awesome. easy at a glance to see what you have. Mm -hmm. So, And these tubs are just the inexpensive plastic um, shoebox tubs that you can get at your discount store or any of those kinds of places. Mm -hmm. And I do use these a lot. The other thing I like to do is I just use a little label maker and put on the end of the tub one yard cuts or blue one yard cuts if I have a lot of blue or something like that. It just kind of helps at a glance to see what's in the tub. That's great. Now on fat quarters, mm -hmm. got some fat quarters yep. here. Here, would we'll you put this? You. Yeah. On fat quarters, I do something very, very similar. Still folding it in a way that one fold equals one fat quarter. This is a little bit smaller tub, more of a shoebox size, and then I just put them and group them by color, like you can see here. Now, one of the things that I know you and I talked about mm -hmm. is sometimes when we're organizing these, we'll take our our tub and set it this way and stack them on top of each other. Mm. That, and it's sort of like your um, 
the weight of the fat quarters kind of hold them down while yes. you're stacking. Yes, so awesome. it does help whenever you're putting them in there. And I just think it looks so pretty. It is a great way to do that. I like that. Yeah. Now, All if right. you don't have room in your sewing room or if you have shelving and you would like to put your fabric on a shelf mm -hmm. and not in a tub, a um, couple of other things that you could do is fold it so that this slides up on a shelf and you see your ends this way. And what's cool about that is they, when they order three yard quilts from Fabric Cafe, mm -hmm. it comes already folded like Ooh, this. Oh, handy. So you can just take it out of the plastic bag and put it right up there on the shelf. Save you a step. Yes. <laughs> yes. So let's just kind of fold that real quick so you can see. And as I mentioned, you would just set this on, on a shelf of a bookcase so that you just see the ends. And once again, one fold equals one yard. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of back to our one yard here. Our first, first fold is exactly the same as if you were putting it in a bin. You mm -hmm. fold your selvage to your fold. We're going to fold it skinny wise like this. Fold it again. And then we're going to fold it the end to the center and the end to the center. Now what's really cool about this folding is it kind of keeps all your raw edges mm -hmm. on the inside of yes. the, the folding, so it's really nice. And then fold in half, and there's our edge. There you go. There you go. So that goes right with that stack. These are all gorgeous fabrics. They absolutely are. If you guys haven't checked out our Fabric by the Yard section online, you should mm -hmm. do that. Well, let me share a couple of other ideas of ways to store your fabric. Okay, okay. So, I know one that we... is, we came up with this idea. Now, there's, there's um, someone out there that actually sells the little plastic things that you can wrap your mm -hmm. fabric on. But if you can't find those or just want to save a little money, you can go to your uh, quilt shop uh, or fabric store and you can ask them to, if you can have some of their bolts. And that's what this is. It's just a bolt that came from the fabric store that you cut in half. And oh, if that's you have great. a wonderful husband like me, he put it on his some kind of saw, band <laughs> saw or table, table saw, saw or something, <laughs> and he cut them in half for me. And um, at one point, whenever I took fabric to shows, I would actually do this. And you can take masking tape or painter's tape mm -hmm. for this, and you just tape one end onto the core, and then you wrap it up, and then you can store it on a shelf, like a bookshelf. Oh, like a book. Yeah. So then, once again, you can see exactly what you have. It would sort of look like a little miniature version of our <gasps> wall. Make yeah. it look like you have your own quilt store. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And then another way to do it is just to cut a piece of cardboard from um, packing, scrap. yeah, from scrap of cardboard. And you do the same thing. You can just fold your fabric and put one end, you just tape it to the cardboard, mm -hmm. and then wrap it around and put a little bit more. But just use either masking tape or uh, painter's tape because okay. it comes off really, really easily. That's good to And know. that also could be stored like that. This could also be stored in one of those boot boxes or shoe boxes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could do it this way as well. Like a little file. Mm-hmm. That's But that's another cool. way to keep it nice and neat but won't shift around quite so much. Those are great tips, too. Now, if you've ever been to a quilt show and you've seen our rolls, they look like this. And I love this version. Now, remember whenever I said that I used to um, display fabric at the shows on the, the uh, bolts? Well, I came up with this idea when I met these bands. <laughs> I was at a show and there was another vendor and she had these bands and she was using them um, like this. And she was putting those oh. bands on these. And we do sell these bands on Which would website. be great for that as well if you wanted to use them there. That's, That's right. A super tip. So, but I was looking for another way to um, store the fabric and getting it back and forth to the shows. And so I played around with it till I came up with this way of dealing with your fabric. So the way I do it is I want my number one fabric on the outside. So you're seeing the number one fabric. The number uh, two fabric is here, and the number three fabric is here. So you do it in that order. Put number one down first, put number two down second, and number three down the third. Okay. Now you want this to be even up here. Okay. Because it will just automatically um, 
shift so that you can see all oh, three fabrics. and that looks so pretty. Yeah, I like that. Now what I do is I go about a third mm -hmm. and I fold it up like so. And then you want to get a good tight start. Okay. And then you roll and just kind of smooth and roll and kind of smooth and roll. Look at that. You're right. It just stacks perfectly see, that way. You've got that beautiful roll there. And then I usually put these around twice uh -huh. and like so. Uh. And then if you want to make your sewing room really pretty, you can use different size baskets and stand your three yard quilts up on basket. end like that. This looks so pretty. I mean, I, I would love to have this in my sewing room just full of three yard kits. And I love just how aesthetically pleasing it is. Mm -hmm. And this just looks so neat and tidy so that, you know, the other thing is, these are your three fabrics for your kit already put together mm -hmm. so that you don't have to go back to your stash and pull. It's a great way to store them so you're just ready to go on so your next So if you want to make your own mm -hmm. kits. Perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. You know what else? You could just slip your pattern right inside the band so you could just pull it out and it's ready to go. So Choose once and you're ready to go. <laughs> I love it. I love it because whenever I get ready to, to uh, sew, I really don't want to have to think. Ugh. I'm just ready to go sew. I just want to go play. Okay. Well, that was fun learning all about ways to store your fabric. And what's up next? We have organizing your patterns and books. A lot of people like to keep their patterns organized in different ways. So we've got some suggestions on this. To start with, uh, you can download this three yard quilt pattern collection sheet from our website mm -hmm. and it's under the free goodies tab and you can go through and mark the different patterns you have. You'll be able to easily see which ones you don't have and that you can add it to your your pattern collection. I will point out a couple of things about this so that whenever you uh, download your pattern sheet, you'll notice that some of the boxes are gray and that means they are not in any book. Okay. If they're in a book, uh -huh. they have an extension number. It'll say book five and it will also have the pattern number. So we've done this in such a way that it's very organized and easy for you to um, keep track of which patterns that you do have. Now, mm -hmm. now this is just a three ring binder that we've picked up at an office yes. supply store and it does have the little pocket on the front so that you can slip that right in there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. So then uh, inside we get the page protectors. Uh, those are great. You can open the, the pattern up and you can slide the pattern in and put your color picture there. Or you could even put another one of these with your color picture on the other side. Oh, yeah. Um, another tip is to use a sticky note. Mm -hmm. If you're getting ready to make a traction, you can say fabric one is this fabric color and number two and ah. number three and just stick it right here on that page. That's a great idea. So it's just another way of organizing your fabric with your patterns. Oh, and then you know what else you could do? I just thought of this idea. You could take snapshots of the quilt top after you've made it and put it on the back side. And you'd have a journal. And you would have a little bit of a journal as well to see how that looked the last time you made that. that pattern. I love that. That's a so great idea. So that's kind idea. of fun. This is neat. Well, you could even do that with your recording of when you made that pattern oh, or who you gave it to. There you go. I love it. Did. Okay. This is really cool too. You can make a tab uh, for your patterns A through D, mm -hmm. and you get these little divider pages at the office supply place as well. That's super handy. And so we have these little tabs on this dividing it alphabetically. Okay. So that's a really good way to take care of um, your your pattern collection. Mm -hmm. And then this can go right on the books, bookshelf like this. Oh, that's great. You can even label on the back if you want to so that you've got the name of the... Oh, that's right. It has a pocket too. It has a pocket too. And guys, whenever you do this, something that I have learned is if you want to print a, a spine for this, to get that spine into the notebook easily, open it up like this and then this will just make it super easy to slip a piece of paper in there. In the paper or could they even do a lightweight cardstock? Either way, mm -hmm. lightweight cardstock, paper, either one and it just slips right in. Yeah. Makes it super simple. So that's one way to do it. Another way is something as simple as a basket. Yeah. With, and, you know, it's hard to believe we've done so many patterns. Oh, no. But we have well over 100 patterns in our 
uh, individual patterns. Mm -hmm. So um, if you don't have well over 100, then you're missing a few. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, you could get those little sticky tabs and do the alphabetizing on these as well. Mm -hmm. I know you can, they're repositionable so you can peel them off and stick them back on. Oh, that's a good idea too. Mm -hmm. So there are different ways that you can organize just in a basket if you don't have a notebook. Now another idea, I'll let you put those yes. over there for me please, is to get the, um, the big rings and you can put them on a ring like this. Again, you could alphabetize them by putting your tabs down at the bottom if you wanted. Um, this one's kind of fun for just looking at them. It really does, um, they flip real nice and easy. Super so, easy. And yeah. then this can just hang on a hook in your sewing room. Absolutely. And they are alphabetized, so if you want to go right straight to the end of the alphabet, oh, there's P's, so you know you can go right straight to <laughs> the course, end of the alphabet. And of course we know that you know what every pattern looks like by its name, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are supposed to. Okay, so that's some ideas about the patterns. Do you have a special way that you organize your patterns? We'd love for you to leave a comment and tell us what you do. We would. We would love to see that. And I love to look at beautiful spaces and beautiful rooms, and the quilting rooms are the best. Oh, so yeah. Absolutely. Please share those with us. Now, if you've got uh, three-yard quilt books, mm -hmm. um, I think one of the best ways is just to get one of these book organizers. Once again, you can get this at your local office supply store or discount store. Mm -hmm. And I really like this one because it's acrylic and it allows you to see the front of the book. Yeah, I like that too. Because we do want to see your picture. Well, of course. <laughs> uh, and of course, once again, if it were me, I would alphabetize them in here, but they're very easy to just set on a shelf. Uh, take the entire box off whenever you want to thumb through them mm -hmm. and be able to um, look at the quilts and select one. And you know, another thing is that when you're looking at your um, books, if you see a pattern that you know you want to make, you should get those little stickies, you know, they're little bitty stickies that you little can put right on a little things. tab on the yeah. edge of the picture so that you can get, say, which book was that in? That's a great <laughs> idea. That is a great idea. So it's yeah. kind of organization and planning all at once. That's right. So another idea, I know that some of our books come as downloadables. So if, you're, if you have downloadable books, one of the ways that you can organize it is to go ahead and print it off. Mm -hmm. I like to print them in color and slip the cover into that front of that uh, mm -hmm. binder. And of course, I would put also a, a name on the spine. And then once again, um, the plastic page protectors here just put the book in there so that it's easily um, accessed and that it's protected as you're using your patterns. Mm -hmm. So I like it. It makes it super, super simple and really clean. And it, it is, again, one of the nice things about using those sheet protectors. If you want to make any notes, let's say that you mm -hmm. made Checkmate and that you um, found that you thought it was really cute by using rather than solid colors here, you might use little prints, just leave yourself a little note. Um, or if, if there's anything that you want to remember about that, it's great just to leave a little sticky note there. That's a great idea. That's super. So now we're going to talk about organizing some of those more awkward items that you have in your sewing room, mm -hmm. your notions, your rulers, and things like that. So let's talk about rulers first. Okay. Okay. Um, of course, you know, as a quilter, rulers come in all different shapes and sizes, and they can be a little challenging sometimes to store because they're larger pieces. Mm -hmm. um, first thing I want to point out, did you know that most rulers actually have a hole in them? So I know this is my 24 inch, this is my small six and a half inch, and then here is a larger 12 and a half, and you can see that they all have holes in them. So one of the things that I like to do and the way that I store my rulers is just hanging them on a nail in my sewing closet. So super simple, takes up a very little room and it, it stores nice and flat and I can see them all. Well, whenever I went down to friends in San Antonio, her guest room was also her sewing room yes. and she had a little walk-in closet and I know, and she said, now here's where you can hang your clothes, and, <laughs> and then the rest of it was little shelves and drawers and all of that, and I remember seeing her um, rulers hanging on the wall thinking, hmm, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I store, because it really takes up such a small, small amount of room, so mm -hmm. it's very handy. 
And the other way, now if you don't have uh, the ability, the wall space or whatever, mm -hmm. um, another thing that you can do is if you have a sewing table or a sewing desk in your room, is just to actually get like a letter organizer or file organizer and then just store them right inside of here. I know like most quilters, you have all different shapes and sizes of rulers. Wow. And whenever you get to store them this way, you can put the little ones together, or all your triangles together, mm -hmm. and then all of your squares together and things like that. So it makes it nice and neat. Takes up a little bit more room, but still definitely uh, very, very handy. Well, with the nails on the wall, you might want to put more than one because knowing me, the one I wanted would be up against the wall and I'd have to take them all off. So you might want to use more than one uh, or use this. Of course, of course. So I think I had three different ones for the three different sizes. Of, yes. Yeah. So another thing, so uh -huh. let's talk about thread. Mm. Now, thread spaghetti? Thread spaghetti. Yep, that's <laughs> right. Now, this is actually from my guest room slash sewing room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is how I stored my thread. I found these cute little plastic bins that are not very tall. I did label this as my sewing thread. I see. Look at there. <laughs> because I also had specialty threads for embroidery and then I had quilting threads. Mm -hmm. So I'd put quilting in one box, my embroidery threads in another oh, okay. box, and then my sewing mm -hmm. thread in a box. And this was great and now they do kind of fall over a little bit. But, um, but they all stand up. They all stand up and you can still put the lid on it so that you can find exactly what you need. I love bins because I can just pull them off the shelf, take them to my work area, and select what I need right out of the bin. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes it very handy and efficient. Um, another thing, if you don't know this, um, most thread has a little keeper at the top. Yes, right. So you pop it up, wrap it in, pop it shut, and that way it'll keep them from unraveling. But there's lots of little tricks that you can do to keep your threads from getting all tangled. Well, just mm -hmm. masking tape or painter's tape, or I know they sell different little nettings and things that you can put around them to help as well. So one of the next ways that I really enjoy organizing is to buy decorative jars. Now these were some inexpensive jars that uh, we found at a discount store. Mm -hmm. We've just used our label maker to tag them what we're gonna store in each one. And then we can just put our smaller items like thimbles, mm -hmm. needles, buttons, things like that in these jars. I like this because if you have a shelf like in a guest bedroom, mm -hmm. because my room's double, like I'm sure many of yours do, let us know if it does. I'd be curious to see if who has a dedicated room and who has to share with a guest. <laughs> <laughs> or the dining room or the true, den. Yeah. True, true. So, Th what this did is it allowed me to kind of have a guest room that was decorated, but still was an organization tool mm -hmm. for me. So this looked really sweet on the shelf, along with some stacks of fabrics and some rolls. And <laughs> it did, and it looked really sweet. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it was really good. Um, another thing I want to mention is on your needles, um, when you use your needles up, I'm going to digress just a little bit too, I keep these little containers and whenever I switch my needle, I take a Sharpie and put an X across the top and put the old needles back in one of these empty uh -huh. ones. That's a good idea. That way when you throw them away, you're not putting these needles directly into the trash and it's just kind of a safety thing. So that's mm -hmm. a, good, a good thing to keep in mind as well. Good. All right. Let's yeah. talk about bobbins, just a second. Okay. Because I see that you have uh, bobbins, and we all know that there are different little gadgets that you can get for your bobbins, but this is a really cool little idea. <laughs> the, these are little ponytail bobbins. Oh, yes. See, those are little, little and holders. They're, yeah, they're, and so they're perfect. You can, uh, a lot of times you can pick these up either at, um, I, I actually got these at a little spe specialty shop, and I thought mm -hmm. they were so cute, but then we just have the plain <laughs> little ponytail mm -hmm. Let me fish um, that out of here. <laughs> yeah. So here's a, a plain one. And you might have a little bit of thread sticking out, but not a lot. And I tried to color coordinate it. So there's a pink bobbin and there's a pink ponytail holder. <laughs> oh, perfect. So that's just another way to keep those bobbins from tangling oh. in the drawer. Yes. I, that's a forever, spaghetti. <laughs> forever uh, trouble there. Right. So another idea 
and I know I have several of these in mm -hmm. my sewing cabinet drawers. And of course you can get these in different configurations and sizes. It's just these little acrylic trays and they can hold all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I keep things that I'm gonna use often in my drawers in my sewing cabinet. My seam ripper, unfortunately. Um, extra <laughs> sewing needles. I, I tend to keep an extra package in there, but spares in a, in a little jar. Tape measures, straight pins, different things like that. Um, you can get these in long configurations as well as squares like mm -hmm. this. Love so it. it's super helpful. And these little clippies, I just love these. I think these would look so pretty in a jar too, because to me they look like little candy colors. But they do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you have to share with us? Well, I want to talk about um, the sewing kits. Oh. You know, I do. Some of you may know this, that if we take trips, I like to do my binding in the car. Okay. And I have a little sewing kit that I take with me. But what do I want to make sure I have in my sewing kit? Now, we accumulated um, two or three little different ideas for sewing kits. You can buy the little sewing kits like this that are just made specifically for sewing. And that's one thing that we can use. So pretty. Another thing you can use is like a makeup bag. Uh, Fran was telling me she got this free when she got some makeup somewhere. <laughs> and um, Or you can buy them inexpensively at many, mm -hmm. many stores. I've even seen them at the grocery store. Yep. So mm -hmm. if you want to organize something like this, you could do that. Now, I have a box that I have used for so long. I don't even know. And the poor thing, it, it, has, it has some cosmetic <laughs> issues here. But um, if Bob replaced the handle because the handle came off. Um, the little latch here is a little on the shaky side, but it's a cute little wooden box that I found just, I don't know, I just found it somewhere and I thought, oh, that is so cute. And so I use this for my sewing box. It's small, it's compact. If it's sitting on the end table at, in the living room, it almost looks decorative like. Oh. Looks like a, an like antique. That. Mm -hmm. of some sort. It's not really antique, but I've used it about it's 20 getting years. There. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you put in your uh, sewing kit? Okay, these are some things that I like to keep in my sewing kit. Of course, a seam ripper. I mean, what would we do without our seam ripper? Mm -hmm. A thimble. So you want to make sure that you get a thimble and uh, that that is in your um, box. A little pair of scissors. Um, always need a little pair of scissors to cut that thread. Yep. And then, of course, you need some thread. Uh -huh. And again, this one has that cute little snap-on top feature to so that it won't come undone. But here's another idea for you. You can group fabrics together in the little uh, the snack tops. bag. Oh, that's perfect. Snack bags are perfect for thread. Look at they that. They are. They just work really, really well. And again, it keeps them from being all tangly. I guess you can tell I have an issue with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and when you're sewing, uh, thread magic is wonderful. I really like it. You can just take your uh, thread and you lay it over. You can see mine's well used. Oh, yeah. You just lay your thread over it, snap that on, and you pull it out. And it puts um, a little bit of a, a stiffness to your thread and it won't tangle as much when you're doing hand stitching. Okay, so that's handy to have in your mm -hmm. sewing kit. Course. Now, of course, you need your needles, and I love, love, love. Did I tell you that I love these? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these are binding <laughs> needles, and they are awesome. Uh, it, it changed my life <laughs> to have a binding needle. Love them. So, and as Fran said about what do you do with your leftover needles, I did, um, friend Janet George uh -huh. gave me uh, some of these needle cases, and this one is pretty well full, but I use it, or you can use the empties on this. And again, like Fran said, if you have an empty, just put an X on it so you know you've already used that needle. Mm -hmm. And just as a reminder, people forget that needles get dull, and if they get dull, they don't slide through the fabric as well. And if you want your binding to go quickly, or any kind of hand sewing, change your needle often. Um, Would you say about one every quilt or one every other quilt? Or? I probably change around two to three quilts, but I can just tell whenever I start struggling okay. getting that needle to go quickly, that's I a, just say it's time. Yeah, that's a great tip. Okay, needle threader. They, these are really <laughs> cute. They they have the needle threader and the little, and the flashlight. little light. For those of us that are always doing this. <laughs> that's right. 
<laughs> so the needle threader is great. Now I am a big fan of these clips. And you notice mine are on the side of the needle case. Uh -huh. This is a needle case that uh, Sandy uh, McClin McClinney made for me for Christmas one year. And I love it. And I take these off of my quilt and I use them to hold it closed. And inside I've got some uh -huh. straight pins and some needles. So it does two things. It holds this closed, but it also puts my clippies at my fingertip. Perfect. Clippies are the bloodless way of doing <laughs> binding. I don't stick myself with the straight pins. Love it. But straight pins come in handy, so yep. you'll want to have some straight pins in there as well. And these are the clips that I was talking about. Perfect. Well, this looks like a very well-stocked sewing room, sewing kit, mm -hmm. and very organized. I like that. Very I like nice. it. I like to be able to find everything that I need right at my fingertips. Yep. Organization is efficiency, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So I hope that you enjoyed our organization tips and that you were able to pick up a couple of things that you can use in your sewing room. And if you liked this video, be sure to like it, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little bell button and that will notify you when we have a new video coming out. Awesome, and please be sure to leave comments for us because we want to know what your organizational yes. tips are. So it's Donna Robertson and Fran Morgan. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>